welcome back to your second to last episode of Dash School. Congratulations. I'm your teacher, Amanda B. Johnson, and as promised, yes, I will now tell you everything you need to know about the master node. You'll likely recall that yesterday I mentioned that the Dash DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, was created for two reasons. First, to have a way to fund ourselves that would keep us independent and able to cover all of our own expenses. And second was a way to make decisions. We were able to check off the funding box with the treasury, yes, but the question now remains, how do we make network-wide decisions? And who decides where all of those funds from the treasury go anyway? That's this one. See, in the perennial question that decentralized networks all face, which is, who's in charge when no one in particular is in charge? There's no CEO. There's no president. A sort of method has to be invented that will cause us to make the best decisions most of the time. Dash's decision makers, then, are called masternodes. And the reason they are bestowed with the authority to make network-wide decisions is primarily because they each must prove an ownership of a thousand Dash. With that kind of wealth at stake, we believe the masternodes to be the most incentivized to make good decisions from which they will profit, and the least likely to make poor decisions from which they will lose. And how do the masternodes make decisions? How do they come to consensus about what will be done on the network? Well, in a way you're probably pretty familiar with. They vote. They cast votes that are recorded directly onto the Dash blockchain, and that's how network-wide decisions are made, by a majority vote. Wild, huh? And in exchange for voting rights, masternodes must perform three basic tasks. They must keep an updated copy of the blockchain at all times. Yeah, seems like a good idea. They must provide the network with instant send functionality. What? And they also must provide the network with private send functionality. Oh, what are these crazy new terms? Well, I'll tell ya. Instant send and private send are two functionalities which set Dash apart from every other blockchain. And to understand what they do and why they are vitally important, to the ability to offer money as a service, digital cash, we've got to go back to the basics you now know about how blockchains work. Remember how a blockchain can be visualized by something like this? Time stamped updates to a ledger, right? Well, those updates, as you'll recall, only come through every so often, every number of minutes. Remember from the prior lesson how when I send digital currency from my wallet, my private keys sign a message that broadcast that transaction to the rest of the network? Well, that broadcasted transaction is not considered confirmed or irreversible until it's been included in the next block. That's why each block that is found after your wallet has broadcast your transaction is called a confirmation. So if this was the most recent block found, and you sent me half a dash, say, oh, 20, 30 minutes ago, when it was recorded in that block, we would say that your transaction of half a dash from you to me now has one, two, three, four, five confirmations. And that's cool, and that's fine, but guess what? In a real-world, person-to-person retail environment, waiting for a confirmation that takes minutes is way too long. Hell, even 15 seconds is too long. I'm a customer, and my hot latte is in my hand, and I'm ready to get out the door, not wait for confirmations. And that is why Dash's masternodes enable instant send. So that even though our blockchain's confirmations come about every couple few minutes, a smaller quorum of masternodes can provide you with an irreversible confirmation in about 1.3 seconds. 
Now that's more the speed of paying for coffee and getting out the door. And what's that other fancy new fandangled term I referenced before? Private scent? Again, going back to our concept of how a blockchain works, you may have deduced by now that every dash which exists within the ledger can be traced back to every account that's ever held it. And on and on, back to the very first block in which it appeared, when it was a part of the newly created block reward, remember? And this can create some major problems for we fickle humans. For example, remember a few episodes back when I referenced that perhaps I hate the hypothetical Alice? Well, what if I know what her public address is? Because hey, maybe she posted it on her Twitter or in an email to me once. Or hey, maybe I even did business with her once. Well, if you chose to pay me some dash to say, pay me back for lunch one day, I would be able to trace those dash on the blockchain back to everywhere they've ever been. And if the dash you sent me ever once belonged to Alice, oh, may the fates have mercy on your soul. See, with the fickleness of human nature, plus many people's desire for privacy, it really makes no sense to have digital units of money that have human histories tied to them. This is already the case with everyone's favorite form of money, cash. When someone gives you cash for a good or service, you don't know who owned it before them, and what's more, you don't care. Because paper cash has a highly desirable property of money, which is this fancy word called fungibility, which means that every unit of money is worth the same as every other equal unit of money which practically translates into me never being able to insist, I don't want coins from Alice. Send me other coins. They're worth more to me. Masternode enabled private send then maintains fungibility by swapping coins among users, which breaks the traceable history of coins on the blockchain. And now, dear viewer, I almost hate to say it, but you actually now know basically everything you need to know about how Dash uses a blockchain to offer money as a service. You know that Dash formed a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, to be able to fund its own miners, masternodes, and have money left over in a treasury. You know that decisions are made in Dash by votes recorded on a blockchain cast by masternodes who each own a thousand Dash. And finally, you know that those masternodes also perform the oh-so-important functions for digital cash, instant send, and private send. Well, good golly, brothers and sisters, what could possibly be left? Well, any honest user of blockchain-based networks will tell you that they are not yet easy to use. For example, those alphanumeric addresses, you know, the X175CB whatever, are kind of gross. Oh, and did I mention that if you forget your wallet's password or forget to make a backup, you lose the entire contents of your wallet? Oh, and did I mention that payments are kind of hard to make? Like if I want to send you some dash, I have to ask you to copy and paste over your alphanumeric address to me. And then every time I want to pay you thereafter, I have to go digging through our emails or chat history just to find the damn thing. Dash realizes that for the average person to want to use a blockchain-based digital currency, all of this has got to go. Oh, and how do we plan on doing that? What do we think we are? Innovative? Well. It'll all be wrapped up in a little software release we like to call Evolution. And to find out what Evolution will bring to the table and why you might care to know about it at this time, tune in to our next and final episode of Dash School. Evolution, then, 
is Dash-specific software set for release in late 2017. The real problem then that Evolution aims to solve is how can we have all, or nearly all, the services offered by a bank without letting any other humans hold our money for us?